Great. So let me go a little bit one step further then and, and ask you, in terms of that human enhancement um, issue and, and work, uh, what are your greatest hopes to, to see accomplished or to accomplish yourself? And what are your greatest fears? Okay. My greatest that I can accomplish or I'd like to see accomplished in the world? Either, either way. Uh, the greatest hope that I would like to accomplish would be to not die. <laughs> um, immortality? Um, no, I don't like the term immortality, radical life extension, and to evolve into um, other different types of forms where I'd have sub-personas in different environments, maybe, you know, uh, multiple personas that I could send out in virtual environments and different environments. I think that would be the greatest performance art, greatest design project possible. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I, I would like very much to be involved in. Um, for um, the world, I think the what I would hope would occur is uh, humans gain a sense of real dignity and put down their arms and stop fighting and work towards uh, helping each other. Um, we can't rely on each individual to do that because so many humans have psychological Sorry, problems. I lost the and sound there. We, we can't rely we on... Uh, yeah, I think if I turn this way, it works. We can't rely on individuals to do this necessarily because most individuals, uh, most humans do have psychological problems of aggression and fears and uh, territoriality and one-upmanship and all the different things that, that is part of our reptilian brain or whatever part of our brain that, that causes us to, to have these psychological effects. Uh, I think that we need um, better organizations to actually get these things done outside of government. Government is too bureaucratic and it gets in the way a lot. Um, so I would like to live on a planet where, you know, there's some peace. <laughs> I mean, you know, stop this fighting and, and stupidity. Uh, that would be a dream come true. Um, that connects again to your uh, better distribution of food as like probably yes. the first and the most fundamental basic step towards that. And health care. And, you know, yeah. too many people in some of these developing countries that – don't have clean water, and it just is totally insane to me. I mean, that is insanity. How could so, we as a species feel comfortable going to sleep at night knowing this is occurring is beyond me. I don't feel good about it. So you so, think that technology can assist in, in resolving those issues? Oh, yes. I think that probably uh, nanotechnology and artificial general intelligence or smart AI uh, could certainly help with this. For one thing, um, a nanotechnology has uh, a lot of potential in the area of, you know, molecular manufacturing and desktop publishing mm -hmm. for, um, you know, actually building, putting molecules together to build certain um, products or structures or elements in nature that um, could uh, take care of these people. Um, so we need to make that a priority. Uh, it sounds so silly because you know, it, why aren't we doing it now? And I'm not the genius behind it. I don't know what to do, but you know, and I think is, that you know. What What is anyway, your greatest fear on on the flip side of that? Oh, the greatest fear would be uh, runaway uh, nanotechnology and um, the uh, gray goose scenario. Yeah, the gray goose scenario, right? And also. Um, Unfriendly super intelligence. I think that would be pretty scary. Um, having, if we develop AI and if it, uh, is not very friendly, uh, is, uh, has the, uh, psychology of humans that is, uh, that has psychology of I'm humans sorry, that is sound. emotionally inept. There? No. Is that, that better? Oh. No. Okay. Let's there see. we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'll hold it like this for now. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Grey Goo. That that has con some concern. Um, uh, and you were speaking about uh, unfriendly AI as the other. Yeah. I, yeah. I think so. Um, say artificial general intelligence or super intelligence that uh, is like a um, uh, a machine that 
you know, goes off on its own. Say if you're a farmer and you're, you know, your machine just starts going off on its own, it runs over you and, you know, or the blades, you know, cut off your arms or these things that happen, some of these horrible accidents that happen with machinery out in the fields of farmlands. So if you, if you look at that and think, well, what if there was, you know, super intelligent machines, robotics that just went, you know, maniac, that would be pretty scary. Mm-hmm. But um, looking so in at that it, sense, I, in that sense, you believe in the singularity. Then would that be fair to say? Uh, I don't. I, yes. Well, uh, I look at it this way: the singularity for me is not a belief system; it's a technological event. It's uh, the singularity basically is uh, if and when super intelligence exceeds, far exceeds human level intelligence. Mm-hmm that the world would not be the same. And certainly, even if you look at it on a very um, small level, of course the world would not be the same because up until now, humans have been the highest intelligence on the planet. So we would have to step aside and accept that there was another intelligence that was smarter than us mm-hmm. and know better than us and make decisions, sorry, make decisions um Maybe without consulting us. So how would that affect our psyche? Not very well. So my view is, my particular philosophical view on this is that we would have to become the superintelligences. That I don't look at uh, superintelligence or, or AAGI being out there. I see it as being integrated into humans. So we would have to evolve. We'd have to bootstrap ourselves and become, you know, ex- you know extreme transhumans. Well, maybe not extreme transhuman. We'd have to become, um, late level transhuman into posthuman and that so, would be the posthuman condition so the only way to survive the birth of agi uh, and direct it in a safe end with respect to humanity would be to merge with it basically i think so yeah. i don't think we'd have to merge 100 percent with all of it but i think that that we're a competitive species you know we like sports we like competing and we like winning and uh, we like our we like things the way we like it. That's human nature. Uh, we have good and we have we have not so good qualities. But I think that we are a competitive species. I think survival is innate in us. We'll do any. We'll, we'll cut off our own arm if it's stuck in a in a doorway just to survive. So we will do what we need to do to survive and help each other survive. So I think that that'll be a decision we'll have to make. Um, it'd be like a, a vaccine, perhaps, uh, if you want to look at it. You know. Symbolically, it'll be a vaccine to protect ourselves against a virus, meaning intelligence being smarter than us. So, that yeah. almost sounds to me like inoculation from death or from from uh, aging, right? Because when we merge with those technologies, obviously we'll have the capabilities to extend life radically. Our mental, uh, intellectual capacities will be extended equally. So it's almost that kind of a vaccination that would prevent death and, and aging. It's, it's very interesting. Um, let me see. Uh, how do you rate our chances of surviving the singularity then? Because I'm always surprised. I interview all kinds of people, such as, for example, Michael Anisimov, Kevin Kelly, Aubrey de Grey, uh, Kevin Warwick. And I'm always surprised by the kinds of uh, answers people give me in terms of chances. Like, for example, Michael Anisimov gave me 25% in his opinion that humanity will survive a singularity. Um, Kevin Warwick said, well, if you're talking about in human form, I'd say less than 1%. If you're talking about in a sort of cyborg type, like merged machine human form, I'd say very high, like 75, 80%. So for him, there's no other way. For him, humanity is doomed. And for us, the only way to survive is, as you said, to merge with them, at least to some degree. So how, what would you rate our chances of survival? I would rate our chances of survival um, 80% plus. And maybe that's um, a bit optimistic, but I'm a rational optimist. I base my supposition on the knowledge that the human species is a species which will do whatever it takes to survive. So I think if push comes to shove, we will do whatever it takes to survive and keep our species alive and going. And if we have to 
um, merge and uh, evolve beyond the human uh, biology, the human genome, and uh, merge with uh, the machine, I think that that would be the post-human. And I don't see it as a cyborg. I think that the term cyborg ought to be left with cyborg. A cyborg is a man, machine, human machine, and has a great history, and it's a wonderful word, and it's very similar to transhuman. But uh, transhuman is a self-directed evolution. A cyborg has um, no psychology with it. Um, Donna Haraway certainly created the cyborg manifesto, but that's based on feminism and ideology, um, not based on biology and life extension or a fighting disease or, or any of the issues of transhumanism. So I think that we'll become more transhuman and we'll have to become posthuman or whatever other term we designate for this um, singularity uh, leap uh, to survive. Mm. 